Well, uh, the question is, what, what can we do moving forward uh, to reduce or significantly minimize uh, these acts of violence, especially in our schools and even in our, in our uh, neighborhoods as well? And what I've said is that we should not wait for a perfect solution before we move forward. We need to make sure that our schools are as safe as our airports and our government, government buildings. Um, that's number one. Uh, whether we're dealing with um, uh, reasonable, pragmatic um, uh, gun laws, you know, uh, whether we are talking about background checks, and the, the overwhelming percentage of people in this country are in favor of some form of background checks, whether we're talking about the elimination of bump stops, limiting the capacity of magazines. Um, I've also talked about like metal detectors. One thing I do know is that when you come and visit me at City Hall, you just cannot walk into City Hall and, 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 and go up on any floor. Uh, so we have to find a number of things that we put in place uh, like yesterday that can minimize the risk of gun violence in our schools and in our, in our neighborhoods. But to do nothing, uh, as we have done, is proven to be a flawed and deadly strategy. And I'm all for prayer uh, and condolences. Uh, and to the families that have been impacted, for example, in Santa Fe, and all of the other school shootings to those families, I extend to them my condolences and my prayers. Um, and as we say in my church, the fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. But after you finish praying, you got to get up off your knees and you have to act. You know, to pray without actions is not going to carry you very, very far. Um, the, the names will be put forth uh, this week uh, in, the, in the next uh, few days, but it will, be, it will take place this week. Um, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm adding a few other names, uh, and there have been a number of people who have uh, contacted either me or contacted the chief and others who would like to serve. There are a number of people who would like to serve on the mayor's commission to end, to end uh, violence, gun violence. So, uh, but we'll make that announcement this week, and then it's my hope that they will start meeting as of the following week. Well, you know, I, I do think on the state and on national level, um, background checks is something that we need to be doing. You know, um, uh, ending bump stops is something that we, we can do. Limiting, limiting the capacity of, of magazines is something we can do. Providing and appropriating more dollars for security measures at our schools. We just can't rely on the, lo the local school districts are already tapped out. So you can provide more dollars. And quite frankly, uh, what I would prefer uh, is to, instead of us just having conversations or town hall meetings, uh, convene the legislatures all over this country now. I know when I, I spent 20, 25 years in the legislature, uh, and I've participated in many special sessions that took place outside of the regular session. Instead of us just having these conversations, uh, out in the general public, because what happened at Santa Fe was not the first school shootings. They've been happening quite a bit over the last 20 years, and nearly 130, 940 lives have been lost over that time period. But now is the time to be debating these measures uh, in the halls of Congress or in our legislators, legislatures all over the country, and providing additional revenue, additional funding, so that when schools start in the fall, they are more secure, and our kids have the confidence, uh, are comfortable with going to school, focusing on their classwork, rather than having to be fearful of their safety. Well, I'm going to speak to it, and then I'm going to let Chief Acevedo speak to it from, from law enforcement personnel. I will tell you that over the last 25 years when I was in the legislature, that the legislature implemented a number of policies that increased the, uh, not only the access, 
but the, uh, but people holding guns or having possession of guns almost on almost every event that exists in the state of Texas. That occurred over the last over the last over the last ten years. It's not just enough of talking about the entrance and exits of schools. Okay, and even if you're going to do that, uh, to retrofit these schools or new schools, it costs dollars. Okay, so you need to provide local school districts with added resources. And I've yet to hear uh, that there's a willingness to provide additional resources so that these schools can be protected. But it has to be a holistic solution. You know, you simply, and I hope that the media just won't allow people, I hope you won't allow me, let me just speak for me, I hope you won't allow me just to say we're either just going to hold a town hall meeting or we're just going to um, offer our prayers and condolences. Um, and don't press us to do more. I hope, you, I hope you will take a look at my background to see whether or not my words are consistent with my actions from a legislative point of view, okay? Because we have to, no one is trying to take away anybody's guns. No one is trying to do that. I'm not trying to do that. But there's nothing wrong with having reasonable, pragmatic restrictions on, on one's ability to access and use their guns. Now, what I will say, and, let me, and I'll stop and turn over to Chief Acevedo. If one school fails for five years uh, uh, in the state of Texas, the state literally can close down that school or take over the management of that school district. If one school academically fails for five consecutive years, the state can come in and close it down. Now in, in this state, for example, when eight kids are now dead, you mean to tell me that there's nothing that the state or anybody else is going to do but simply to extend our condolences to the families, but we're not going to take definitive, immediate steps to make sure that these schools are as uh, safe as airports and governmental offices. You cannot go into the capital, the state of Texas, without the capital being very secure, protecting legislators and people on all levels. You try to go to the capital and carry a gun and see what would happen. The odds are you're not going to get past the, the first floor. And the same thing at City Hall. So the only thing that I'm saying is that we need to take whatever steps we need to, that we need to take, to make sure that our schools are as safe as our airports, as well as our government buildings. Chief, you want to answer? Good morning, thank you, Mayor. Thank you for your leadership. And uh, quite frankly, one of the things that I want to make real clear right off the bat, because when police chiefs speak, it's really easy for those that don't like what, the cherry pick what we have to say. When they like what we have to say, well, we gotta listen to the police chiefs. But this man, I'll never forget, when I really got to know who Sylvester Turner was when I was in Austin, Texas. It was at the end of the session, about two sessions ago now, not the one that just ended, the one before. It was towards the end of the session, in this legislature, rather than talking about keeping guns in the right hands and making sure that we're doing everything we can as a government to keep guns in the right hands. It's not gun control. It's about access control, controlling access of firearms to Americans that are law-abiding and of sound mind. And I'll never forget, towards the end of that session, we saw that constitutional carry, which really means anybody and everybody can carry a gun in the state of Texas. If you all remember, it was an open carry, constitutional carry, where they wanted to say law enforcement of the amendment passed, Mayor. If you'll recall, the mayor was still in the legislature. It would prohibit law enforcement from asking someone for their license to carry. And the one thing I know about the state of Texas is that the very, very, very vast majority of people that are licensed to carry, I know they've all been vetted in terms of their criminal backgrounds, and I know they've had, all had training, which includes proficiency with the firearms, and we are a state of responsible gun owners. But rather than talk about let's keep firearms in the hands of responsible gun owners, they tried to pass that that amendment. And on a Tuesday night, I learned about it. We had a press conference the next day, 
And we called for the governor then because what's happening now is that we're already getting word in law enforcement that once again this next session, constitutional carry will be back out uh, uh, an agenda for people that aren't about gun sense, for people who are not about keeping guns in the right hands. It's for people that want a free for all in this state. And I will say that we were able to kill it. Law enforcement was, and I'll never forget this man's speech on the floor of the House when he made his comments that moved me to say, I want to work for that man someday because his heart's in the right mind and it's in the right place. And the reason that I'm saying that is because people that don't want police chiefs to speak out against a free-for-all in terms of gun policy dismiss our position because they say that all I do is speak whatever the mayor tells me to do. But we vetted each other. This man hired me because when it comes to public safety, our positions, my known positions, were aligned with his, and I took on this job because that day when Mayor Turner spoke out against constitutional carry and had the courage to do so, just like he's done with so many other issues, I wanted to work for you, and I'm glad and honored to be here working for you on these issues. So I can answer any questions, but I can just tell you it's time for action, and the mayor's got that right. Oh, God, you know, the, 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 the media needs to stop talking about gun control. Every, you know, words matter. They matter in uh, the way that uh, politicians speak. They matter in the way that you report. Nobody that I know of in law enforcement is talking about taking away guns from the hands and from the homes of law-abiding Americans of sound mind. Stop using those. It's kind of like sanctuary cities. We use these terms because we want to evoke an emotion at the extremes of both uh, both ends of the spectrum. We're talking about what can we do. And by the way, I've had since my Facebook rant, uh, I've had very many people come up to me on the streets. They're, this, this is a narrative. I'm a third generation Texan. I'm a gun owner. I'm a, I'm, I'm a hunter and I'm a member of the NRA as so are my grown sons. And we're with you. This is not a zero-sum proposition, and we need to be pragmatic and get it done. Yes. Sorry, boss. Go on. What I wanted to ask you is, going back to 2016, Well, the people, the people themselves must speak. Um, people like myself that hold office, public officials, we are employees. We work for the people in the city. I work for the people in this city. People work for the people in the city or in this state or in this country. Um, let, me, uh, let me just try to make it as succinct as I can make it. Um, if the response is that there is nothing that we can do to stop our children from being killed in our schools, but to offer prayers and condolences, then what sort of statement are we making? If that's all we can do, if we are to say to, my, to our children that you go to, our, you go to school and we hope and pray nothing will happen and there's nothing, anything that we can do as parents and adults to stop it or mitigate the risk, that's, that's a, that's, what type of statement is that? What type of statement is that? And quite frankly, I value, I value our children over, over our guns or over elections. I value our kids. And, I'm, and from, from, from my point of view, I'm all talked out. This didn't just happen in Santa Fe. It's been happening time and time and time again. Until the people decide that they want different, okay, it's gonna, if nothing is going to happen. If the, if the, if the voters in, in this city, if the voters in the state of Texas, if they're fine, if, 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 if people have come to the conclusion that we just got some bad people out here, some evil folk, and so there's nothing that we can do but accept the fact that we've got some evil folk, okay, fine, but let me tell you, we can have some evil folk, but there are laws that we've been put in place to keep them from doing certain things to check their behavior. There are a lot of evil folk that are driving, 
but we have laws to say if, you, if we catch it, something's going to happen. Okay? These are our children, folks. These are our children. And they are demanding that we do more than what we have always done. And that's nothing. These are our children. So I recognize not everyone is going to agree with my position. I got that. I got that. But when I look at, my, when I look at myself in the mirror, I want to feel as though I've done all that I can do. Okay? I'm not trying to put something out that everybody's going to say, oh, Mel, that's fine. Okay? And I, can simply, and, and I can simply say, you know, let's pray for the families. Let's extend their condolences. We recognize we got some evil folk. Parents do a better job of taking care of your kids. Okay? I can say all of that. But that's not going to stop the next incident from occurring. The fixation, the fixation which is God's got to stop. It's got to. And we have to make our schools as safe as we make our airports and our government buildings. We are protecting elected officials and we are protecting travelers more so than we are protecting our children. If you're a traveler, we are taking definitive steps and we are expending the necessary dollars to keep travelers safe. If you are an elected official, we are expending the necessary dollars to make sure that people that don't like our views, that we are protected. But when it comes to our kids, all of a sudden, the only thing we can offer are prayers. But if people are okay with that, fine. I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with it. And we can do more. And when I look at these, with these parents and these kids, I see my own daughter. And I see other children. And these are our children. These are our children. So, no, we need to have this conversation. But what I'm also saying to all of you, to the media, don't just allow us to just hold a forum. And don't just stick a camera in people's faces, elected officials, while we are saying some nice things. There comes a point in time where you have to check our record. Check the record. Don't just let, you wouldn't let me off the hook like that. So, you know, come on now. This is too important. Because, quite frankly, what happened in Santa Fe could have happened in any one of my 17 school districts that crisscross the city of Houston. And we need, to do, we, we, we need to do more. We must do more. When the public demands more, then I think it's going to happen. 